Hey guys. So in this video, we're going to talk about a scenario where you have to make a change to a deposit where your bank account has been reconciled already and you don't want to unreconcile the bank account just to fix one transaction. So that, yes, there is a way to fix that. There is a way to fix your deposit without having to undo a reconciliation or mess up reconciliation in any way. But before we get to that, I have a little favor to ask you. If my content is helping you, would you please hit subscribe? More subscribers I get, more motivation I get to produce more content to help people like yourself with their businesses. So please do hit subscribe if my content is helping you. And if you have any suggestions, please feel free to comment under the videos and I'll try my best to create a video on those topics as well. So let's get started. First scenario is going to be, we're going to, we're going to go over two scenarios actually. First scenario we're going to go over is where you have found that your income has been duplicated. So let's pull a PNL report and click on the services number. Okay. When you do that, see how this 1800 and this 1800, it's actually the same. What I've done here is by mistake, I have created an invoice and I have not closed it. Instead, when the payment was received, I recorded it as services again, as income again. So I'm duplicating my income and I'm overstating my accounts receivable by doing that. So now I need to fix it. We are assuming that deposit has been reconciled already and now I need to go back and make change. But I don't want to make any change to my reconciliation. So watch how we're going to fix it. Let's go to this. First, verify that this is the actual payment. I know that this was the payment towards this invoice. So I'm going to click on this invoice. And I'm going to receive a payment towards this. And payment was made on 8-7-CH. And I'm going to post it to undeposited funds account. Okay, this is the account you have to pick if you want to fix the duplicate payments. So save and close. Okay, so I'm done doing that now. Now let's go back to the PL report again. Close this invoice. Go back to the PL report, this detail. Uh, click here on the deposit, that's duplicate deposit. Okay, now I can see my payment here, the 1800. I'm going to check this off and I'm going to delete this one. By doing this, the deposit amount doesn't change. The account doesn't change. Your, if, your account, if your account has been reconciled, this deposit is not going to mess up your reconciliation. And at the same time, you are fixing the duplicate payment. You're removing the extra payment by following this process. So save and close. And you're fixing your accounts receivable too in this process. Now watch when I refresh the report. That 1800 the extra 1800 is gone now. You only have an invoice. That's it. So this is the first scenario. Now, second scenario is... We received $3,800 in our bank account and we assumed it to be a payment for this particular customer's pay, uh, invoice, but that was not the case. So we need to go back and fix it now. So now when, when you try to fix the payment, just by clicking here, when you try to fix the payment here, it's not going to let you do anything in the payment. So let's go to the payment and let's try to fix it. It's going to give you a warning that you have already deposited this payment, so you can't make any change to it. If I try to delete this payment, saying that I did it by mistake, okay, see how I'm getting a, a, a warning? It's not going to let me do it. So there's another way to do it, actually. So we're going to close this. We're going to go to a different tab. We're going to find this $3,800 here. So this is the deposit. Okay, so this was the actual money coming in, the $3,800 that I assumed was a payment for ABC company. It wasn't. Let's say it was a tax refund. NYX, NYS, Department of Taxation and Finance. Okay, it's not a customer, it's a vendor. Okay, NYS, DOT. I'm going to save this. Okay, so vendor has been added and we are going to say taxes. Let's say it was an adjustment for payroll taxes and we got $3,800 back. Whatever it is, you're going to use the account that it's for. 
So whatever category it's supposed to go into, you can enter it here. And description if you want any tax refund for corp taxes or payroll taxes for payroll taxes whatever it is and you're going to uncheck this so this is the opposite of what we did in the first scenario okay save and close so now i have unlinked the payment from the deposit without messing up the reconciliation or that we had done already now i'm going to go back to my invoice my payment actually and I am going to delete this payment because this payment never existed. The payment, the $3,800 payment was not for this invoice. This invoice should have been open still. So this invoice is going to stay open. That's it. Whenever you receive the payment, record the payment for that. But th this is the trick that you're going to use to deal with these two kind of scenarios. And I hope it's going to help you with your QuickBooks cleanup. And if you have any questions or comments, do let me know. And happy accounting.